We welcome you again to uh, Emmaus Road Podcast. And again today we're going to continue our uh, short series on what is the gospel and being set free from the gospel uh, or from the religion, being set free from that. What do we mean when we <clears throat> talk about the difference between religion and grace? What is the gospel? Everybody's going, if you stood at Walmart and took a survey and you had gone to church at any time, people would say the gospel is good news. But, all right, good news about what? Can, can you further define what the good news is? In our opinion, as we go through this, because the good news <clears throat> is opening the eyes of the blind so we can see. Right. How many people do you know that are unsaved? Why do they continue to be unsaved? Mainly because they do not see the need to be saved. They have not yet come, in, come into the understanding that they were born a sinner. They are a sinner, not by anything they have done, mm -mm. but they were born in sin. Therefore, they need a Savior, not by anything they can do to be saved, but they need a Savior to do it for them. So we did not participate in being born into sin, nor do we have a part to play in us being saved. God does everything through his blood. His blood washes our sin. Mm -hmm. His blood gives us the faith mm -hmm. to believe. It is not even our faith. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. So we do not even originate faith. We cannot even come up with faith that a divine being would accept. You know, it just doesn't happen. He is the author and finisher. So he gives us the faith to accept what he did for us. So it's not anything that we do. No prerequisite. No trying to remember every sin I have always done. It is believing. How do you compare your salvation experience with John 3.16? Just take John 3.16, <clears throat> then compare what somebody told you you had to do to accept Christ and see how much difference there is. Mm -hmm. Just take that one verse that is the most well-known verse in the world, see how your salvation experience that you were told you had to go through for Christ to save you, compare that with John 3.16, and you will see the difference in grace and religion. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor, we ended up speaking uh, specifically a individual that may have a person with drinking. That can be any item no sure. matter what the item is. Absolutely. Gossip, straight down the line, no matter what quote-unquote sin we feel we may have in our life that we cannot get victory over. We were just using that for an example. So we are saying that a person can be saved. That's correct. And still have bondage. Absolutely. Because... We are a weak human vessel. We can be saved and still not have understanding or enlightenment of grace. Right. You know, the Old Testament said, in all of your getting, get understanding. Right. So we need revelation, illumination. We need what Jesus did for us on the cross explained to the modern day church and it's essentially what Paul's ministry was explaining the cross mm -hmm. his entire ministry mm -hmm. so 
Religion, we said, was dependence on emotion, right. feelings, and our senses. Mm -hmm. uh, grace is dependent on the power source of the Holy Spirit. Continue that thought for um, the audience. Okay. You know, uh, we talked about freedom and liberty. What are we talking about, freedom and liberty? Um, that, as we used that last example on the last podcast, a man struggling with alcohol, or let's say a man struggling with pornography, whatever the case, and can't get victory because he's tried everything within his own power. He's saved, and he's trying to impress God and, and doing things so God will help him, not realizing that Jesus did all the help that he can possibly do. He's already accomplished everything for us at the cross. So he wants us to go and say, Lord, thank you. Be in a spirit of thanksgiving now for what he's accomplished. So grace will reveal to you what Christ came to do. Here's a great example of that. If, okay. if, let's just say that, let's say you were born, uh, you say when you got born again, let's just put it into a natural picture. Let's say it's like a family, a little country family living in a little house and, and they're kind of live out on the out, outskirts of town and, and you're born as a new baby in that house. You've been born again. You came into the family of God. And, and you, as you're growing up, you're noticing that every time it's time to, to eat supper, mama's going out there and getting firewood, and she's getting old fire stove going, and she's working to get a fire so she can cook your supper, and it's starting to get dark in the evening, and, and uh, Paul goes out there and finds a, some way to, uh, to get some more wood and stuff to get a fire in the fireplace so there'll be light in the living room. And so your, all, your, all your resources in the house, everything that's going to bring you warmth, light, comfort, food, it's all based on what you do. Then Jesus says, hey, listen, there's a place called Joe Wheeler Power Company. Mm-hmm. And there's a switch on the wall. Why are you, why, there's a heater, electric heater. It, it's already done for you. All you got to do is hit the switch. You just got to believe that I came and I have taken care of everything for you. And it's like people in the church hear about grace and the goodness of God, and they still want to do the going out and cutting firewood. They still want to do the labor. Still <laughs> right. want to put forth the effort. Right. And that's why people are still bound by alcohol, bound by, you know, we believe in being set free because that's what Jesus said he would do in Isaiah and in Luke. He said, I've come to set the captives free. So it's not that I get saved and I say, well, now grace has covered me and protected me and taken away. Now I can go live how I want to and be crazy and live a wild life. That's not what the gospel is. The gospel is a relationship. Jesus Fairly. became grace so that he could show you how much he loved you, that he does not want any of us to be bound. That's what he promised. But the only way we'll ever receive what he did for you is that you see that he is grace. He is the gospel. He is good news. And he came to make our eyes open for those who are spiritually <clears throat> blind. Well, and I reckon all of us have, have known someone with this story and this experience. Okay. If we truly believed in grace, we would never hear somebody on their deathbed hoping they've done enough. I hope I've done enough. Right. As a pastor, I've heard that a lot. Right. You, you hear that. <clears throat> it's crazy. I would say virtually all the time. All the time. Because the eyes of understanding have not been open to them that man cannot save himself. Right. And man cannot go to, man could even go to the cross, but all he would do would end up being dead. Right. Because he would die in sin. That's exactly right. Wage of sin is death. Wage of sin is death, so he would die in sin. Jesus went to the cross bearing our sin, but not as a sinner. He was not a sinner that died on the cross. If he was a sinner, then he would be buried and could not raise. Okay. And because he could not, because the sin debt would not have been paid. Right. He had to be our sin bearer. Right. Just like uh, a Jew would carry a lamb on the back of his shoulder. Mm-hmm going to the altar and offering that lamb for sin. He, the lamb, the, the Israelite would be bearing the lamb on his shoulder and that lamb would be 
his sacrifice and right. Uh huh. Jesus bore our sin, but he did not become a sinner, no. or God could not have raised him from right. the Right, the word says in the likeness of sinful man. In the likeness. Plus, God did not abandon him on the cross. If you read Paul's writing, it says God was in Christ Re on the cross. Reconciling the world to himself. Reconciling the world <laughs> unto himself. I was always taught Jesus is over here. God is over here. Uh -huh. They were separated. They were mad and everything else. But Paul says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Oh, that's powerful. If we know that God, understand the cross, if we know that God never left Christ okay. when he was on the cross, we can believe that he'll never leave me or you. That's right. Nothing will separate you from his love. Mm -hmm.